Good evening and welcome to the Oshkosh Area Schools. Excuse me. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education regular meeting for Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Would you please call the roll? Carlin? Here. Evans? Here. Garner? Here. Herzog? Here. Olmstead? Here. Peschel? Here. Talaji? Here. We have a quorum. Wonderful. This time we'll ask our superintendent, Dr. Vicki Cartwright, if she would please be, do the honors of leading us in the pledge for this evening. Dr. Cartwright. Let me try that one more time. Okay. If everyone could please join me. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United America. States of America, America. And, and to the Republic for which it stands, stands. one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and yeah, justice yeah. for all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cartwright. The next item on the agenda is the board president's report. I always enjoy sharing things about what's happening in the district, particularly with our students. I know they're working hard. I know their teachers are working hard and I know that parents are supporting them in these efforts. So I applaud all of you. I have attended a couple of meetings on behalf of the board since we last met. I've attended two meetings of the joint review board which has addressed the issue of reallocating some uh, TIF district funds so that the city may establish a, an account or a fund for businesses who are impacted by COVID-19. This would create a fund of a million dollars that would go for loans and grants to businesses impacted uh, by the, the current health emergency. I've also attended a Wisconsin Association of School Board meeting virtually uh, that was very interesting. Uh, there are 15 of us from around the state, and um, it was interesting to hear what's going on in various regions of the state currently. I also attended a meeting of the Wisconsin Associations of School Boards Insurance Committee, of which I am a member, where we talked about some of the implications of COVID-19 and the impact on uh, insurance and insurance liability. I also wanted to note that we we held a virtual meeting on Monday night for the reorganization of the school board, which is required annually by law. And I want to congratulate my fellow board members, Kelly Olmstead, for agreeing to serve another year as vice president, Jim Evans serving another year as clerk, Stephanie Carlin serving another year as treasurer. And it's my distinct honor to continue to serve as your president for another year. I also want, wanted to note that CESA 6, which is a cooperative group of 39 school districts in our part of the state, is offering free, and I'll emphasize that, free webinars almost on a daily basis for parents and for teachers. So if you haven't taken uh, part in any of those, you might want to check those out. The address is simply www.cesa, that's C-E-S-A 6.org, and it's under the events section. So with that, I will turn over the next agenda item to Dr. Cartwright. Thank you very much, Dr. Herzog. We have a few things to announce to you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the superintendent's good news report. So the first thing that we would like to um, talk with you about is related to the navigating through the um, COVID-19 and at-home learning at this point in time. It's just a, a quick reminder as we continue to navigate our at-home learning environment, the district website is regularly updated with the latest information, updates, and resources. We know that there's a lot of communication being sent from teachers, schools, and the district. And we wanna thank our families for continuing to stay engaged and involved with their children's education. 
I want to take a moment to spotlight our um, free grab and go meal program. Um, at this point in time, as of April 29th, the district has served over 85,830 meals to those in need. Um, the district is committed to ensuring that no child or Oshkosh Area School District family member goes hungry during this difficult time. Um, this week, we, we did transition to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday distribution to reduce the number of interactions taking place while providing families with improved access. So in other words, on Monday, when you come to pick up your meals, you're getting Mondays and Tuesdays meals. On Wednesdays, you're getting Wednesdays and Thursdays meals. And on Fridays, you're getting Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays meals. Um, so that way we are continuing to offer those weekend meals for pickup um, throughout, throughout this process. And last but not certainly not least, I wanna thank the many Oshkosh Area School District food service, custodians, support staff, peer professionals, and volunteers that are helping to make this program possible. Um, these are truly our frontline heroes and we are so grateful for their hard work, dedication, and compassion. Um, and effective today, uh, we did start partnering with the food pantry. Uh, they were at our North High School site today. They're going to make a rotation from all of our school sites um, on each of our days of operation so that they can continue to provide additional meals. Um, as we have advised in the past, we provide breakfast and lunch options, uh, whereas the food pantry will be able to provide those, those dinner options for our students and families in need. As you know, of course, learning looks a lot different right now, um, but there are so many great things happening in our districts thanks to the creativity and talents of our schools and staff members. During the time of at-home learning, we want to share some of those unique virtual learning activities that are taking place. So as you can see here, we remain committed to keeping students engaged in learning during this unique experience, including our youngest learners over 5,000 at-home learning kits for literacy and math and science were recently sent to kindergarten through second grade families. The kits are a follow-up to the resources previously sent home with students to support at-home learning. Additionally, we're excited to announce that we have made classroom Chromebooks available for kindergarten, first, and second grade families who do not have a device at home. Of those 500 Chromebooks that are available, we've almost already um, issued out over um, about half of those um, at this point in time, with this only being Wednesday when we started this up on Monday. So we're very excited to be, to be providing those opportunities to our families. From videos to photo messages to lip sync videos and advice for parents, staff throughout the district are finding unique ways to show that they care and that they are thinking about our students and families. Communities at Oshkosh North, those students continue to engage in our community even throughout these uncertain times. Students are researching COVID-19 and making comparisons to the Spanish flu as they are journaling the Anne Frank as a mentor or, or a mentor text. Students are participating in social media campaigns on how to flatten the curve. Each student has found everyday items and researched how to use them to dis disinfect property properly. Oshkosh North students enrolled in, enrolled in photography have been busy completing a photo challenge to be become familiar with their at-home photography tools and settings. Students used what camera device they have had at home without using the auto setting and have experimented with light and backgrounds. Just take a look at those photos. Isn't it amazing what they're able to accomplish? Franklin Elementary School is engaged with students and parents via Facebook, sharing mindful activities, read aloud videos, social emotional videos, as well as positive pick-me-ups. Additionally, staff are using Google Classroom and Flipgrid to share read aloud stories. The Flipgrid interaction provides the opportunity for students to hear from their teachers and classmates and relate to each other.
Carl Traeger Middle School students are enjoying hands-on learning thanks to the creativity of their science teacher, Mr. Don Allen. He started making basement science videos. I'm gonna say that again, basement science videos, uh, which allow students to participate in the activities along with him, of course, in the virtual environment. Students are able to gather household materials and either conduct the activity along with Mr. Allen or they can simply follow along, observe the activities, and complete the follow-up questions. Shapiro STEM Academy second graders are actively learning about the world around them while celebrating Earth Day this past week. The creativity in which the students shared their learning was unique and so engaging. Oshkosh West Band students were recently given an assignment to create a demonstration video about how to breathe properly as a musician. For those of you who don't know, musicians, either choral or instrumental, do have to breathe differently than just the average Joe. In this demonstration, sophomore clarinet player Evelyn used her eighth grade tuba player sibling, Jake, as a student and did a great job with the presentation. And again, for those of you who don't know, tuba requires a significant amount of air in order to play. Oshkosh West English three students will be meeting virtually to design the last unit for the semester. The students will share ideas for the content and the final product so they can truly engage in their learning. Additionally, students in AP European history are able to hear pre-recorded lectures from their teacher. Students can watch the lectures and take notes for before participating in discussions as a class via Zoom. The district is continuing to proactively manage our new at-home learning environment. On the screen, you will see just a few examples of, of what has been a consuming my personal time lately. Um, please note that these are just a few examples as there's a lot of moving elements behind the scenes. Last, but certainly not least, because we're not gonna be meeting again as a board until after this occurs. I wanna take a moment to thank our teachers and our teaching staff. This upcoming Monday is the start of Teacher Appreciation Week. And while we may not be able to celebrate our teachers in our traditional ways, we want everyone to know how much we appreciate them. We already knew that our teachers were awesome, but I'm sure these past few weeks have shown us just how incredible they truly are. Our district successes and continued improvement would not be possible without them. So that would conclude Dr. Herzog, my superintendent's good news report. Um, however, we do have an administrative report that I wanna provide for you. Um, as I request uh, Dr. Jones to come forward um, virtually to talk about this. Um, this is related to the high school graduation and prom plans due to the COVID-19 um, pandemic. There's some information that I think is gonna be critically important for our community and our parents at large to be aware of. Um, one thing that we are starting to understand and that we believe that is extremely important for our community to understand is that the current stay at home order, and that's as of today, um, April 29th, the current stay at home order under Governor Evers, of course, has us coming back, back and for the community re to resume activities here later in May. So after Memorial Day, that, that Monday uh, or that Tuesday at 8 a.m. However, for school districts, it is different. Our orders, we are under the order um, of not doing any type of school-sponsored event until after June 30th, 2020. So that means that the ability for us to be able to have district-sponsored events, such as um, 
teacher parades or school student sponsored parades or in person graduation or prom those type of events right now are not allowable under under law for us right now um, because it does not for the badger bounce back program for example um, for phase three, which would be where we would have to be in order to offer prom, um, we would have to, to, to have at least phase three, as well as approval from at least the Winnebago um, County Health Department in order to host prom. We don't have that at this point in time. And we already know definitively it would have to be after June 30th. So we are really trying to be proactive on this as much as possible. We want, we know so much has been taken away from our high school seniors, the class of 2020. And we are really trying to be as creative as possible to ensure that all of our students are able to ex have some type of experience for their high school graduation. We know that some of our high school um, seniors are going to be leaving during the month of June. We know that some of them are going to be entering into the military right now. Some of them will be taking manufacturing jobs. Um, some of them are going to be taking other type of jobs that will take them away from the Oshkosh community. And therefore, we know that the solution that will allow for all high school seniors to have some type of graduation experience is that virtual graduation. But please know we are actively hoping and we are actively working behind the scenes so that when we do enter at least phase two of the Badger Bounce Back program um, and we have permission from our various constituents, uh, for example, uh, the Department of Health, um, that we will be able to have some type of in-person graduation. Hence, we're looking to really offer more to our high school seniors rather than less. There are some districts across the state that are saying that they're only offering an in-person graduation. There are some districts across the state that are setting dates and saying that we're only doing an in-person um, graduation. We're trying to offer both. We're trying to uh, ensure that we have contingency plans that are in place that make it a meaningful experience for our high school seniors and families. This is something of significant importance to us as a district and as our your leadership team and I know of our school board members as well. Um, we take this very seriously. We want to make sure again that by offering the virtual graduation ceremony um, on the dates that were originally announced that we're able to give that experience to all high school seniors, regardless of what their plans are beyond that high school graduation date. We are also listening very closely for, to our community members. In the staff report, you're gonna see where we've reported out where we've made, uh, we've listened to some of the recommendations that have been given to us on how this can be made special um, and looking at how we can incorporate that. For example, when we're showing pictures of the high school seniors with their name, what awards did they have? Um, do they have honor cords? Do they have certain um, awards that we would typically be announcing when they, cross, when they would walk across the stage and looking to do that as well? Um, I also need for you to know um, that I personally am continue to remain engaged um, on the legal side of things, um, as well as legislative side of things, as to having discussions with DPI and others, what are the maximum things that we can do given the situation that we are currently within that will be allowable, that we will be covered from um, you know, a risk management standpoint as well, and that ultimately would be in the best interest of our students and our community without exposing them to potential harm um, and gives them the most experience that we can for our seniors and their families. So this is an ongoing conversation. It is not a done deal. Um, we are listening to the recommendations that were given to, to us. And we are so grateful for the many people that gave their recommendations to us. Some of them are doable, some of them are not. 
some of the recommendations were given that were given to us were news articles um, that are coming from other districts out of state. So they have different rules than what we have within Wisconsin that have been outlined. Some of them are within Wisconsin, but I'll be frank with you, even as recent as yesterday, um, being on conference calls at the state level uh, with different uh, association and lawyers that are listening to the, uh, that are speaking at those events saying, you know, the water parades, the street parades, those kind of things, districts, you really need to be talking to your legal counsel. You really need to be talking to your risk management insurance companies. You really need to be talking to your, your local health department agencies prior to doing those type of activities. I want to assure that the Oshkosh community is fully aware that we are listening to all of that advisement and that those are the reasons why we are making the decisions that we're making. We are in contact with those agencies and we're listening very carefully because we ultimately care about our community and the well-being of our students. We do not want to participate in any type of activity that could potentially put our students and their families at risk for this pandemic event that is occurring right now, nor do we want to put something at risk for the district that again would ultimately hurt our community. Um, so, our you know we say students first in every decision that we make. I am asking and and hoping that our community understands that ultimately every decision that is being made right now is with that premise at mind: students first, and that we do no harm. I, while I cannot, um, I, I will not talk negatively of um, other districts and what they're doing because their advisement be, may be different based upon their region, based upon what's happening within their community. But I can advise, I can certainly tell you within the Oshkosh community and within the Winnebago County, um, that the decisions that are being made as far as all right, we're going to hold, we're going to postpone, we're going to we're going to wait, or we're, right now we're doing a virtual so that we can ensure that we give an opportunity to all students. But we're still planning on trying to do everything possible to have an in-person opportunity for our students. I'm hoping that people will hear that message loud and clear because that is the intent of the district. For prom, what I need for everyone to understand is that we have to be at the third level of the Badger bounce back plan. And we have to have the Winnebago Health Department clear, um, go ahead, as you might say, as well as the other two I spoke about, which is the um, board council, um, as well as a risk management um, and saying that, yes, you can do this. So what I would encourage for people, rather than coming out and say, this is the date that we're gonna have prom and for people to go ahead and start preparing for that, um, I, wanna, I wanna instead say the message of, please keep hope. We don't want you to give up hope. That is not what we're trying to say. Don't give up hope. What we're saying is instead, look for this. Look for the signs when we're entering into phase three, phase three of the Badger plan. And look, um, once you see that the state is entering into phase three, then you can anticipate some type of announcement coming forward from the, um, from the school district related to prom. Um, we don't wanna get out in front. We don't wanna say, oh, it's gonna happen on July 1st. Um, knowing that we may not be in phase three at that point in time. People are planning for it. They adjust their, their vacation plans. Um, and then all of a sudden that may not occur. Uh, rather than doing that, we want to instead say the message or send the message of this is what we're looking for. And very specifically, again, going back for, for the Badger bounce back plan, we're looking for phase three. And phase three is the phase 
where uh, we can have groups of larger than 50 people. In other words, there's no maximum in order for us to be able to, to have different events. Now, obviously prom is different than in-person graduation because in-person graduation may look different, right? We may be able to set that up in, in a variety of different ways. And many of our community members have given us ideas and suggestions on how that may look. So again, prom is phase three. Um, I would say in-person graduation, we would be looking at at least phase two. Um, and we are planning for these activities to occur at this point in time, provided that we can do it. Our, our hopes and intentions are that this will hopefully occur towards the end of the summer. If it doesn't, then we will have to reconsider at that point in time our plans going forward. Um, so Dr. Jones, is there anything that I have missed that you need to add to this information? Nope, not at this time. Thank you. Board members, any questions that you may have at this point in time? I, I do have one question while my fellow board members are reflecting on what you've shared. Um, there was a reference in the staff report to a graduation committee existing at both high schools. Could you please clarify who makes up the graduation committee at each of our high schools? Dr. Jones. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, the principal has a, a committee made up of, of mainly faculty that coordinate all details normally on every graduation um, and or, or big event. Um, uh, both prom has a, a one committee and graduation has another committee. And so it's made up of, of the faculty advisors that, that uh, advise the principal, but the principal has the final say. Are there students on either the prom committees or the graduation committees? Um, I think they're in contact with, with some of their, their, their uh, fellow uh, kids that represent, um, but I don't know in these days if there's direct contact because of the situation we're in. Thank you. So Dr. Herzog, I did verify some of that information as well. While they may not necessarily be on the committee itself, um, and many of those faculty advisors do reach out to senior representatives in order to get their impact, their, their feedback related to some of the suggestions um, being in play. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? This I evening? do. This is um, I would like to get, thank you. I would like to get some of the feedback from the, um, the survey that we sent. What was the feedback that we were getting back from parents and families? So a majority of the feed that, that we received was on the very first day for which we, re we presented that, that survey. And it was prior to our follow-up communication. What we realized quickly was that people did not um, walk away with the understanding that it was our intent to continue to plan for an in-person um, graduation ceremony. And so a lot of the feedback that we received was related to um, ensuring that we did an in-person um, graduation opportunity. Uh, once we put out the second um, communication that came from me directly to clarify that, no, listen, our intent is that we're trying to do both. We're trying to give for those individuals who will not be here later in the summer an opportunity to have some type of a graduation ceremony. And it being, by the way, of quality through an, an, um, an online, you know, virtual graduation ceremony. And we're trying to do an in-person um, graduation ceremony. The, the feedback did change. Um, so when we looked at the feedback from the very first day versus everything that came in after the first day, it was definitely different. Um, so the feedback on the very first day was, no, don't do a virtual. We don't want a virtual. We've worked too hard. And this obviously was mostly from our students. We've worked way too hard you know, to have a virtual graduation. And then once we clarified and said, no, 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 hold on. We, we think people are misunderstanding us that we're really intending to do both um, a virtual as well as an in-person when we can, hopefully later this summer. Um, that the, that the, 
messaging and the understanding of what the messaging had shifted. And so when that happened, the subsequent feedback that we received were information such as, hey, when you show the student, can you make sure that you list um, all of the different recognitions that they have? Um, you know, or the honorees and the, the type of things that we would typically announce when they walk across the stage. Um, can you make sure that you don't forget about the student videos? Um, so some of those iconic traditions that we do for each school um, that, that are a little bit different for, for West as well as North high schools, right? Um, so we started receiving that type of feedback. And so we are looking at that type of feedback right now and trying to the best of our ability to incorporate that into that virtual graduation ceremony. Can they take the um, survey more than once? Because the, the people that took the survey the first day, um, are they able to then, I mean, obviously they're the ones that wanted to be engaged. Were they able to take the, the survey again? And if they can't, can they um, just send an email to someone then about their concerns or their what they want to add to it? Because I'm afraid that then if we got half of them Monday or Tuesday, whatever, I don't remember what day it was. It was last week. People can't make another comment and I want them to be able to make another comment. So the survey closed at noon today. We did open it back up. So in other words, anyone after the original date, which I believe was on Thursday last week, I'm, and I may be incorrect, it may have been Friday because my days are getting a little fuzzy here, <laughs> like everybody else. Um, um, after that date, I did talk with uh, Katie Neiman, our communication director, and I said, make sure that those individuals who want to make who attempt more than once, you know, in other words, after they've received the subsequent communication, if they want to log back in, that they can give us some, some additional information. So we did make that available. Um, the survey did close yesterday at noon though, only because okay. we needed time to be able to pull it apart, analyze it, and for me to give you the report of which, for example, of which I just provided to you. Okay. I have one more comment and then I'll let my fellow board members talk. Is there been talk or how is, do we do this as a district, do we decide? Or is this for the WIAAA, um, for the three sport, for your kids? How does that work for these kids now? So in that, what the, that discussion, so what you're talking about is about the WIAA. They recently yeah. came out, um, I'm gonna be oh, yeah. very frank with you, they did not they have a, prior to their announcement. Okay. Prior to their announcement, they did not consult with school um, superintendents or district administrators, only because it's known as both both names. They did not consult with us. They did not consult with our representative, which is Wazda. Um, instead, though we have membership, in other words, we have someone that represents us on that committee. Um, they're an individual rather than the, it's like one board member versus the board, right? Right, right. Um, so they made a decision um, to go forward and say, we are going to extend spring sports through the month of July. I can definitively and affirmatively tell you that throughout the Fox Valley region, a majority of the school districts will not be participating within that opportunity. It is not, um, it, I have not made a final determination on that at this point in time. However, I will let you know that I'm leaning towards the um, side of not participating. And the reason is, multi is, is I have multiple reasons. One, anytime you go in, into any type of sporting event, there is a conditioning um, season that is prior to that. We have many students at home right now that do not have the opportunity to be going and con doing the conditioning and the strength training that is required in order to participate in a um, athletic event, which means that we put them at a higher risk of injury um, going forward. Secondly, um, secondary to that is a majority of our athletic conference um, districts are not have already said they're not participating. So we have nobody to compete against. Exactly. Um, thirdly, we have a lot of seniors that participate uh, within that. In the month of July, they may or may not be be here. <laughs> you know, they may already they've already officially graduated, 
um, and they may not be around in which to participate within that. And so we may not even be able to make teams. Okay. I do need for you to know, um, Ms. Olmstead, that I've had this conversation with Brad Jajowski um, and um, he and I have, have discussed this at length. Um, and so it's not just an arbitrary decision that I'm making on my own. I, I've definitely involved our, our athletic directors. Um, he, you know, he's bringing forward, he's speaking on behalf, on behalf of, of Craig as well as himself when he's talking with me um, so that we can have an intelligent conversation. Um, again, a final decision has not been made. However, that is the direction for which we are headed. Okay. Um, I do want to, as a parent, I did get a, um, an email from a coach for my daughter in high school on whether or not we wanted to participate. And I know a lot of other parents got the same thing. So um, I'm glad to hear that you guys are also listening, you know, looking at those, um, those surveys also. Because I know a lot of, I mean, just from the, 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 parents that have shared with me, you know, their thoughts on that. Right. And again, ultimately, we're, we're really looking out for student safety um, right. to begin with, because we haven't been in school since May 13th, right? Or not May, but March 13th. And if there are students who are on teams currently, and they don't have access to weightlifting equipment, um, you know, strength resistant training, um, any of those kind of things that are your conditioning elements and conditioning is extremely important uh, because it's through the conditioning that when you get involved through in, into a game situation, which is immediate impact, immediate reliance upon certain muscle groups, um, the conditioning of your muscles, those type of things that you can potentially put your students at risk. In addition to that, there are some spring sports candidly speaking, our students weren't even able to go and get the clearance from their, you know, the, the typical clearance from their general practitioner of, uh, yep, yeah, you're okay, you're cleared to go ahead and participate in sports. Um, and then to expect that all of a sudden in July um, that they're going to be able to get those type of appointments when right now people currently, as of today, can't even get into their GP is just, even if they're not not doing well, um, you know, unless there's some type of emergency situation. Um, so we have to take a look at the overall situation and the overall um, impact that it has as a community a whole, but ultimately what does it mean for our students? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. This is Carlin. Dr. Cartwright, um, and uh, some communication went out to West regarding prom, I think it was yesterday. And I think people that are watching might be confused because um, I'm hearing you say that prom is a maybe and the communication said that a date will be chosen for prom. So I've had that, I've had a conversation with Ms. Cole today um, just for clarification at this point in time, there are, are multiple moving parts and I, I hope people will be understanding of this. There are, there is a significant amount of information that is given to school districts on a daily basis. I am receiving um, multiple legal updates that just continue to add on from day to day to day. Um, Ms. Cole did not, when she made that announcement, she did not have the most recent information that I had received yesterday morning. Um, you know, she made that announcement prior to the, the information that I had received um, yesterday morning, to be frank with you. So what I want to say to our general public is we are extremely, extremely appreciative of people understanding that this is a highly fluid situation. Things change rapidly. Um, the information that I received today may be completely different a week from today. For example, we already know under the governor's safer at home order, it's under challenge right now. And you know, as soon as tomorrow or Friday, the rules of the game may change. We can only advise you of the most recent information that we have. 
Um, when I spoke with Ms. Cole, my understanding is that communication was saying, look forward, we're, we're hoping that we can put a date forward out there. What I need people to understand is that we're not going to be able to put a date out there per se, but this is what we have to look to. What I can tell you definitively is once we hit phase three of the Badger bounce back plan, once we hit phase three, then we can look to plan for a date. Now that doesn't mean that things aren't happening behind the scenes. That does not mean that people aren't making plans. It doesn't mean that prom committees aren't looking, okay, wh who's our DJ? Where do we possibly want to have this? What is the thing that we want to have? What type of supplies do we know that we need to order? It doesn't mean that they're, they've stopped working on that stuff. In fact, con um, they are working on that kind of stuff. And, there, and, and so that the moment that we, are, we have the ability to say, okay, we're clear. Now we can start looking for a date. Um, at that point in time, all the other planning has already occurred. It truly is a matter of placing the orders, setting the date, and going forward. Um, so the, the communication I really need to our community here is that we currently, as of today, we have to be in for prom because there is a difference between in-person graduation versus prom. For prom, we have to be in phase three. For in-person graduation, we have to be in phase two um, because in-person graduation, we can make modifications as to how that looks and how that may transpire. There are conversations that are happening at the state level. I'm not at liberty to share it. I apologize about that. But looking at how can we make this happen, and I'm right there just so you know, as your superintendent, I'm right there advocating and supporting for some of those plans to occur so that we can have some type of in-person graduation um, ceremony for our, for our seniors. This is how important it is to the Oshkosh Area School District. Will there be a follow-up communication? Because my concern was that people got really excited about that and they went out and bought dresses or something and, you know. And that, you know, Ms. Carlin, that's exactly what we're trying to be cautious of. Um, during, this during this time right now, there are some school districts that are, are setting dates or that are making those type of announcements. Um, but based off of the information, based on conversations I had as recent as today with the Winnebago Health Department, um, as far as timelines are concerned, those kind of things, we are not in a position to commit to a date. And the last thing we want our families to do, uh, we know that there are a lot of families right now that are hurting. We know that there are a lot of families right now where the, the, their families, their parents, they've lost their jobs or they're furloughed at this point in time. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, to be very honest and, and, you know, all of you know my background, you know where I came from, you know I came from a family of poverty. So I know this, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a place of experience and, and, and heart when I say this. Um, when so much has already been taken away from our high schoolers, families are gonna do whatever they can to make it up to their kids. So many times our families are gonna give and they're gonna give them ways which they can't afford, but they're gonna make it work. When we want to know that we have a definite plan in place and that it's something that we can carry through um, and that we're gonna have the right permissions in place uh, because again, it's not only being phase three, but it's also knowing that the Winnebago Health Department supports it, that our legal counsel supports it, and that our liability insurance supports it in the event that someone puts a claim against the district um, for COVID-19. Um, those are the three elements that we really have to take a look at, as well as the phase three of, of the Badger plan. Um, yeah. once, once we have that in place, we will be ready to put a plan in place and, and, and make that announcement because then families can make that financial commitment with certainty mm -hmm. rather than ifness, if that makes sense. Yep. 
Is it too difficult to describe the difference between phase three and phase two? Because you mentioned graduation has to be a phase three and prom is a- No, I can tell you, ex I can tell you exactly. Here's, here's one of the major differences between phase two, okay? So, and I, I have no problem explaining this. So safer at home, um, when it talks about allow gatherings, including religious above 10, 50 people and safer at home, which is the phase we're in today, it says no, but religious gatherings below 10 and essential functions. So for example, our grab and go program, um, you know, that type of thing, you can have gatherings larger than 10, but beyond that, you're not allowed to have it. Phase one when all gating criteria and core responsibilities are met. It says that yes, you can have gatherings, but again, the maximum you can have is 10 people. That is it. Phase two, again, based on reevaluation of criteria and core responsibilities, can you have gatherings? Yes, but again, it's 50 people maximum. Phase two is what we're talking about for in-person graduation. And obviously it's not your traditional in-person graduation. It's a modified, um, but we're trying to give them some type of in-person experience. Phase three is when you start getting back to normal. Phase three is when they say um, that there's no maximum um, numbers that are put into play at that point in time. And so phase three is when you can have something like prom where, you, you know, because at prom, it, it, it definitely has changed over the years. Maybe, maybe not too, too much. I don't know about y'all, but I remember when I went to prom, the big, you know, yeah, I had my prom date, but the larger issue was me hanging out with my girlfriends <laughs> and we were in a group and it wasn't a small group. It was a rather large group. So, you know, for, uh, for that to occur, obviously, you know, it's a large group. It's more than 50 people. That's for sure. That's why we know that we have to be at least in phase three before we even discuss a prom date. I, I, I don't understand how we could do a graduation with more than 50 people. Are you thinking of doing graduation? There's a lot of different options out there. Um, you know, it, it could, I don't want to go into details because we have not discussed that to that level just yet. And I think okay. there's opportunities for us to learn from other districts from other states, not within Wisconsin, if they're following the regulations that have been given to us. Um, but I do not believe that, um, I think there are some other examples that we can look at from, from other places. You know, it may be that we have some type of outdoor um, going to Titan Stadium, only having a few families at a time or calling people, you know, having some type of, um, there are different apps that you can do where people, you know, you stay on a wait list kind of thing and you, and we call you when it's time for you to come forward. It may be a drive up graduation, um, you know, where people wait in their cars and that way people can see the student walking across the stage and, and those kind of things. Um, and people get be able to honk their horns in support of the student while they're walking across the stage, much as what it is in an in-person type of graduation. If we're in a phase three, it can be a traditional in-person all-out graduation uh, like we traditionally have. It may be that we are in the arena still, um, but we have small groups. And so graduation will last rather than just uh, you know an hour and a half to two hours, it may last the entire day because we're doing small groups at a point you know, throughout the day in order to meet that, that 50 person max. Um, and how we, do the, how we do the speeches and that kind of stuff may look a little bit different. Uh, the, the point being is, is we're really trying to think outside the box. Some of the ideas that I just gave to you are some of the ideas that people gave to us during the survey. Um, it's some of the ideas that we've been looking at from other districts outside of the state of Wisconsin uh, and what they're looking to accomplish. So we're really trying to think outside the box. Um, we're not going to know too, too much until we get closer to time, closer to when we get to phase two or a potential phase three. Um, a lot of it is based on timing. 
Thank you, Dr. Cartwright. Are there other comments or questions? Just, uh, I think everybody can agree that a prom where you have to maintain your six foot personal space cannot be a very good prom. So <laughs> I think waiting to phase three is the best option. I have been uh, reflecting on graduations during my daily dog walks. And um, I've concluded that over the years, I've attended at least 60. Now that's not 60, over 60 years that I've attended because I sometimes attend two and three in one year. North and West have graduations at the same time. Riverside campus has one. So nearly all of us attend those um, and, and plus the project search. So that's four graduations in a year. Every graduation is special. Every face-to-face -face graduation is special because the students are special and the students are unique every year. But for all of those 60 plus graduations of high schools and colleges I've attended, they've never had to contend with a pandemic until this year. And I, I also reflect on comments I've heard over the years in Oshkosh primarily at the high school level of families or individual family members noting that a particular individual is the first one in their family to walk across the graduation stage. And it doesn't matter if they're a new immigrant to this country, first generation, or if their families have been here for several generations. But that concept of walking across the stage is significant. And graduations, as we know, are the most um, highly attended events we have and really the pinnacle of success for us as a school district. So I'm, I'm very hopeful that we can honor our seniors and, and their teachers who have prepared them for this and their families who have prepared them for this, this highly visible um, life-changing moment with a face-to-face with -a -face graduation. That's my hope and that's my dream. Um, but we'll have to see how things pan out. Any other comments or questions? Well, thank you, Dr. Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Or Dr. Jones. And uh, even though they may not be present, Mrs. Cole and Mrs. Kiffmeyer, who I know have been part of this graduation conversation as well. With that, we will move on to the next agenda item on the board agenda which is not a gender related public forum. Did we have anyone who signed up tonight for that forum? No, uh, Dr. Herzog, we did not have any sign up, anyone sign up for non-agenda nor agenda related public forum. Thank you. I, I just wanna take a quick uh, opportunity here to note that because we are meeting in a virtual environment, we no longer have uh, individuals coming directly into our board meetings. However, there is an opportunity for the public to participate by signing up uh, through the virtual OESD virtual board meeting public forum form, which is found on our website. You just need to sign that form prior to five o'clock on the day of one of our meetings, and we would be more than happy to have you participate. If you're not able to do that, you certainly can send in a uh, written response uh, with your ideas and questions, and then Dr. Cartwright will read them aloud. Um, and as with other board meetings where we have open forums, we allow up to three minutes to get the message across. So there are opportunities for the public to participate. That's very important to us as a board. And I just want to review that at this time. Next, then we move on to the consent resolution agenda. For the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item or has discussed it at a previous meeting. These will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any item, it will be pulled out of the consent agenda and will be voted on separately. Are there any items that anyone would like to pull off of the consent resolution tonight? Dr. Cartwright. Not requesting, obviously I'm not a board member, but I do want to provide you with some supplemental information related to summer school staffing. Okay. Um, for this particular resolution, um, the request is so that we can proceed with, with the maximum number um, of staffing that may be um, necessary in order for us to run a summer school. 
this is making the assumption that we are running a um, in-person summer school based off of the most current information that I have available as of today um, in conversation with the Winnebago Health Department. Um, if we were to offer an in-person summer school, more than likely that the soonest we would be able to offer that is in July, which is what you have reflected within your report. Um, based off information that I received yesterday, um, the Department of Public Instruction is, has already put in some emergency provisions. As it is right now, only those individuals who are taking four credit, which would include grades seven through 12, courses in a virtual environment during the summer are we reimbursed. Uh, for all other students, so for kindergarten through grade six, um, if we were to offer virtual summer school, given that we are not allowed to have an in-person summer school session as it exists today, we would not be reimbursed. Therefore, I can affirmatively tell you that we would not be in a position as a school district to offer summer school virtually uh, for those grade levels that we are not, or those courses that we are not reimbursed for um, from the state. However, this is something that is under current action. Uh, this is one of those fluid situations. I would anticipate that by the first board meeting in May, I will have updated information for you related to summer school and what that may look like. Um, I'm going to anticipate that either I will have information saying, you know what, it look, things are looking so much better at this point in time. It looks as though we're going to be able to offer an in-person summer school. Um, however, um, per the recommendation, it, it, you know, we, we, con we, we continue with starting it in July rather than our traditional dates of what we've, we've done in June. Or I'm going to be in, in a position to say, you know what, things just really aren't looking so promising for doing it, but we have permission now and we get funding um, to do a virtual summer school. Therefore, we're going forward with a, with a virtual summer school program and we start that in June, or we may start it in July, um, dependent upon, again, how soon we receive information and confirmation from the state um, on what actions we can take and what that may look like. Or it may be a mixed modality. Um, it may be that we have to, you know, that you're allowed to have some in person. It starts in July. However, you have limitations on the sizes of your classrooms, which mean that you have to split up the classes um, to where maybe you have like A, B days um, so that you only have half the class sizes. Um, and, have the, and, and so on the off days, they're virtual, but on the on days, they're in person. Um, so I guess the reason I'm mentioning this to the board is that we put it as a resolution for you today because we do have to start hiring for summer school. Regardless, we're planning right now to have summer school and therefore we need the authorization in order to go ahead and go forward with hiring personnel. But the plan that is in front of you is for planning out full staffing However, please understand that we're not planning on full staffing right now until we have more information. Thank you, Dr. Cartwright. This was also a topic of the uh, Wisconsin Association of School Boards Board of Directors at their April 17th meeting or whatever the date was. Um, and I believe that the two uh, government relations specialists have been in touch with our lawmakers, hoping that we will be able to be reimbursed uh, throughout the state as districts who provide virtual summer school. We know that there are students who could really benefit from that. And um, whether they're taking things for credit or not, I can, I'm concerned about many of our elementary students who really could benefit from a, a summer school experience. Any other questions or comments on the summer school? All right, I would like to pull resolution 6B on retirements. Are there any other board members who wish to pull one of the consent agenda items? All right, then let me read this and then we'll go for a motion in a second. The board will consider approval of one, minutes of March 18th, 2020 regular board meeting. Two, minutes of March 18th, 2020 executive session of regular board meeting. 
Number three, minutes of March 8th, 2020 special board meeting. Number four, minutes of April 8th, 2020 regular board meeting. Number five, bills payable. Six, personnel. A, appointments, temporary appointments, resignations, and salaries. C, resignation of administrator. D, appointment of administrator. Seven, copy machine vendor. Eight, classroom technology project vendor. Number nine, board meeting calendar for 2020 to 2021. Number 10, personnel resolutions. And number 11, summer school staffing. So moved. That was by Kelly. Yes. Back in by Allison Garner. Thank you. Please call the roll. Carlin. Carlin. Aye. Carlin I. Evans. Aye. Evans I. Garner. Aye. Garner I. Herzog. Aye. Herzog I. Olmsted. Aye. Olmsted I. Peschel. Aye. Peschel I. Salaji. Aye. So, Laji, I motion carried. Thank you very much. Then we will go on to motion number 6B. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the retirements as file secretary to the Board of Education. Moved. So moved, Olmstead. Second, Peschel. Thank you. I had asked that this one be pulled. Um, once again, we have staff members who wish to enter a, a new age and stage in life. And while I certainly applaud them for that, I also know that we are going to miss the contributions that they have made over these many years. Kay Weber is retiring as, a, as an instructional support teacher and a peer coach. I know she's previously, previously ser served as a math teacher in the district, primarily at Merrill Middle. And she's also been involved in Skills USA. She's been with the district since 1989. Julie Vandenberg is a full time literacy resource teacher at Carl Traeger Middle School and has been with the district since 2011. Camille Lyston is currently a third grade teacher at Franklin Elementary School, has served the district since 2000. I met her when she was a classroom teacher over at the old Oak Lawn School. And, uh, I have many fond memories of all of these people. And finally, Julie Dumkey is choosing to retire. Julie is currently serving as the Oshkosh Area School District Education Foundation Coordinator district-wide and joined the district officially in 1989. I've been around long enough to remember when Julie was a science student, science education student at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, had a part-time position in the science outreach office and worked in many of our schools uh, with Dr. Paul Kelter. Some of you may remember him or somebody in the audience might remember Paul. Uh, he did a lot of science outreach work and a lot of professional development with teachers throughout this part of the state in science education, improving their knowledge and skills base to better teach science. So even though Julie has been around the district for um, uh, or since 1989, nearly 30 years, she, her affiliation with the district goes back uh, before that. So I'd like to commend these four individuals as we, we typically do, thank them for the contributions that they have made to our students and to our families over the years. We are very grateful for all that you have done to enhance the learning of our students. Any other comments on these four? Then please call the roll. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, I. Olmsted? Aye. Olmsted, I. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, I. Salaji? Aye. Salaji, I. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, I. Motion carried. Thank you. Are there any individually considered resolutions for this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on there. Are there any requests for future agenda items? I'm assuming we'll get an update on graduation and on prom and other missed opportunities from Skills USA to Wave Robotics to plays to music programs, uh, just a whole myriad of activities that our students 
and staff, unfortunately, and parents in the community are missing out on. Uh, are there any announcements this evening? Dr. Cartwright. Thank you so much. I would encourage our board members and our community at large, please, um, to pay attention during the month of May. Legislatively, they're, to, they're going to be talking um, about potential budget reductions um, and the bu budget reduction acts. Um, some of the conversations that we are hearing about thus far are very concerning to the district. And so I wanna make sure that the board is aware of this as, as totality um, and that all of you have this information. Some of the things that we are hearing right now is, um, as far as potential um, things for them to look at reductions, um, pardon me, just I'm gonna grab this sheet of paper, I do apologize. One thing that they are looking to do um, is currently every district in the state, no matter what your um, what your low revenue, you know, what your revenue caps are right now, across the district, every district re, um, re receives $179 for a revenue limit increase. Um, for the Oshkosh Area School District, um, if they were to remove that from our district or from all districts across the state, that equates to 1.75, approximately $1.75 million for us. In addition, um, what they were talking about is, as you know, in the budget, in the governor's budget, he was trying to help um, low spending districts to get up to the state average rate. And so this past year, we were allowed to go up to $9,700 per student. This upcoming year, we were supposed to be able to go up pending board approval, of course. Um, pending board approval, we would, we would be allowed to go up to $10,000. However, if we are frozen at the $9,700, that equates to $1.18 million approximately. Um, so if they were to t do those two things that, they, that is under potential discussion right now, that equates to approximately a $3 million impact to our budget. Um, this is not something to take lightly. Um, just to give you an idea, um, if we were to give uh, CPI increases for our teachers um, for this upcoming year, um, as to what was, uh, you know, what, what the rate was at this point in time, that equates to $1.23 million. Um, if we were to do salary schedule movement, that equates to approximately $940,000. Well, that's only $2 million of a three, of a $3 million shortcoming. Um, so there's potential conversations of even no matter if you're a low spending district or not, even taking a look at what your revenue limit was for this past year and subtract $50 for every student. Well, that's that equates to $500,000 for us. Um, in, addition to, uh, in addition to that, there's discussions related to, um, let's take a look at what their, um, uh, what their savings are, right? Um, so we are at what is considered to be exactly where we need to be um, when, when we're looking at our, um, not roll forward, I apologize. Um, reserves, um, for, so for the percent of money that we have in reserves, that way it limits any time we have to go for short-term borrowing, those kind of things. It helps prevent us from having to borrow so much. Um, since we do receive our, our funding on a quarterly basis from the state right now. Um, so we are at what is considered to, to be at, we're within reason, we're within board policy, but we're at the very low end of that in our reserve reserves. Um, there's discussions right now where they're saying that there are different um, organizations that are pulling every district's reserve amounts 
um, potential, I don't think is, uh, personally, I don't think it, and, and professionally, I should say, I don't think that's a legal move for them to be able to touch each district's reserve. Um, but I need the board to be, and our community to be aware that these are things that they're talking about right now. Um, so my request is to please pay close attention to the conversations. Um, I'm not advocating for anything particular. My, right now, what I'm advocating for is for you to please pay attention to the conversation during the month of June, of, of month, uh, the months of May and potentially June. Thank you, Dr. Cartwright. Another name for the reserves would be the fund balance, I believe. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that, Dr. Herzog. <laughs> Are there any other announcements this evening? In addition to congratulating our teachers during Teacher Appreciation Week, May 4 to 8th, uh, I want to thank all my fellow board members tonight for your participation and your preparation and um, congratulate our new officers for the coming year. So with that, we would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, Olmstead. Please moved call. by Ms. Carlin. I'm sorry. Moved by Ms. Carlin. Thank you. Please call the roll. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Olmstead? Aye. Olmstead, aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel, aye. Salaji? Aye. Salaji, aye. Carlin? Aye. Carlin, aye. Evans? Aye. Evans, aye. Motion carried. Thank you all very much. This meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>